Beloved parishioners and supporters of the Transfiguration of Christ, Greek Orthodox Church in Mattatuck, New York. Good afternoon, Kali Anastasi. May we all celebrate a joyous and healthy resurrection of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We begun our talk discussing fasting, as well as the importance of pre-sanctified liturgies and the salutation services. From here, we discuss the importance of the Sundays in Great and Holy Lent, from the Sunday of Orthodoxy, to the veneration of the cross, to St. Mary of Egypt. How these Sundays bring us through and build up the climax into Holy Week. Our last discussion brought us into Holy Week proper. From the Saturday of Lazarus, which in Hebrew was Eleazar, to Palm Sunday, to the bridegroom services up till and including the sacrament of Holy Unction. Today I would like to talk upon the rest of the services of Holy Week, for they are not only a part of our traditions and part of our lives, there is also such a richness to the theology of each of these services. The Divine Liturgy that is celebrated on Thursday morning is a Vesporal Liturgy of St. Basil the Great, which by tradition has longer and richer prayers. The themes during the service begin with Christ washing the feet of the disciples, the Last Supper, Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, and his betrayal by his apostle, Judas Iscariot. In the Patriarchate of Jerusalem, the Patriarch himself washes the feet of twelve priests gathered when this account is read during the Gospel. This practice is followed in some churches by the celebrating priest, washing the feet of parishioners. Additionally, every four years at the Ecumenical Patriarchate, the Patriarch with numerous hierarchs, gathers together, blesses, and consecrates Miron, Holy Chrism, one of the sacraments that is used at Holy Baptisms. Holy Thursday evening, we celebrate the Passion and Crucifixion of our Lord. I want to stress the fact, beloved, that every service that takes place within the Church is a celebration, from baptisms to divine liturgies, to funerals, to Holy Week. These services must, must remind us about death and life and how intimately they are linked, as well as the most important fact that our lives are all gifts by the grace of only God. Holy Thursday evening we celebrate the Passion and Crucifixion of our Lord. The term Passion is used due to the fact that Christ was and is perfect man. His passion is what he suffered when he was abandoned, betrayed, wrongfully accused, whipped and spat upon, carried his own cross, nailed to his own cross, and dying upon it. This evening, through the twelve Gospels and hymns that are read and sung, respectively, the crucifixion is reenacted by the priest, chanters, and the faithful gathered. After the fifth gospel is read, the priest carries the cross with the icon of our crucified Lord upon it. The hymn that is sung by the priest, and often repeated by the chanters, says so much. Today is hung upon the tree, he who did hang the land in the midst of the waters. A crown of thorns crowns him who is the king of angels. He is wrapped about with the purple of mockery. Who wrapped the heavens with clouds? He received buffetings. Who freed Adam in the Jordan? He was transfixed with nails. Who was the bridegroom of the church? He was pierced with the spear. Who is the son of the virgin? We worship thy passion, O Christ. Also unto us thy glorious resurrection. Late Thursday night into Friday morning, the royal hours are celebrated. They are the first, 
3rd, 6th, and ninth canonical hours. Growing up in Toronto, we used to celebrate the service Thursday night into Friday morning, 12 o'clock midnight, 1 o'clock a.m., 3 a.m., and 5 a.m. Now, at most churches, these services are either celebrated back-to-back -back in the morning, or they have melded into one. These services celebrate the Passion and the Crucifixion of our Lord once again, with many readings from the Old and the New Testament. It also reiterates an important fact, beloved, that all of Christ's followers and apostles fled, and it was only the woman who stayed by his side, watching him slowly die. Therefore, the royal hours commemorate and honor the women of our traditions, who are one of the firm foundations on which the Church of Jesus Christ was built upon. Apocathilusis, which directly translates into without sitting, is the afternoon service that is celebrated on Good Friday. Good Friday itself is a day of strict fast, prayer, and introspection into our short and blessed lives. This service once again celebrates the Passion and the Crucifixion of our Lord, with a, with a few very important exceptions. The first being that during the Gospel lesson, Christ is taken down from the cross by the celebrating priest and placed onto the altar. The second important aspect about this afternoon's service is that the Epitaphion is processed around the church by the celebrating priest. The Epitaphion is the icon of Christ, with Christ having been taken down from the cross and surrounded by the women who were still present, as well as soldiers and his apostle John. The Epitaphion is placed onto or into the Cavuclion, which is the wooden ornate piece in every church that looks like an ancient funeral table or tomb. After service, some people crawl underneath the Epitaphion and Convuclion as a sign of humility. Holy Friday night is basically an ortho service, for no orthos is celebrated on Saturday morning. This service is also referred to as a lamentation service, for we the faithful are in fear, and we lament the fact that Jesus the Christ, our Lord, went into Hades, or hell, for three days to preach his words of salvation. The hymns that are sung refer to Christ being in Hades. After the doxology, the Cavuclion with the Epitaphion upon it is processed, either around the inside of the church or the outside, depending upon the traditions of that particular congregation. The procession stops approximately four times, symbolizing the four corners of the earth. And the, each of these stops, the priest sings petitions for the health and well-being of the living, as well as for peace to be granted to the departed. In some churches, and a practice that I still incorporate, is at the end of the procession, when the epitaphy is brought to the front of the church, there is a banter between the priest and the chanter, who is inside of the church, with the front doors of the church being closed. The priest knocks on the door and the chanter asks, Who is it? The priest answers, Lift up your gates, ye princes, and ye be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. The chanter replies, Who is this King of glory? The priest replies, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, lift up thy gates, ye princes, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. This symbolizes the earthquake that took place when the Lord was about to enter Hades and preach his words. The service of the small anastasy that is celebrated on Saturday morning of Holy Week is of the Sporal Liturgy of St. Basil the Great. During this service, there are numerous readings from many books of the Old Testament, from Genesis to Isaiah to Job and Daniel and much more. All of these readings are stressing the theme that Jesus is the prophet 
that was spoken of and hoped for in the Old Testament. His death is most necessary for the salvation of humankind. The epistle lesson is important for it brings forth the message that even though we may be entombed with Jesus, due to our baptism, we will rise up again with our Lord. When the priest sprinkles the flower petals singing, Arise, O Lord, he is actually heralding the resurrection of our God. This, the gospel that is read during liturgy continues this theme with an early account of the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection service, anastasy service, the orthros or matins that is celebrated, that takes place before the light is given to the people, proclaims of Christ's crucifixion as well as his descent into Hades. The lights are of the church are extinguished at the end of the matin service, with the chanter of people singing, Behold the dawn and raising of the day. This is symbolizing the myrrh-bearing women who went very early to the tomb on Pascha. The priest then comes out of the altar, opening up the royal gates with his candle lit to offer his light, the light of Christ, to the people singing, Come ye, take light from the light that never wanes. Come glorify the Christ risen from the dead. He lights the people's candles that are present and waiting for the light. The priest will then process to the middle of the church or outside, depending on his and the community's traditions. Here he will read the resurrection gospel, detailing the myrrh-bearing women. After this, he will sing along with chanters, choirs, and the congregation, Christos Anesti, numerous times. When this has finished, the divine liturgy of St. John Chrysostom will begin. At the end of service, the Paschal Sermon of St. John Chrysostom is read. In many churches, it is customary for the people to repeat the phrase epigranti, which in English means it is vexed. After this, the eggs are blessed and given out to the faithful. We crack these eggs on Pascha and many days following. When we crack these eggs with others, we say, Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. The, rep the response is, Alithos Anesti, truly he is risen. The egg symbolizes the tomb of Christ, when one or both eggs are cracked. This symbolizes Jesus being resurrected from his tomb. The eggs are typically red in color, symbolizing the blood that was spilt by our Lord to offer us his salvation. The last service that is typically celebrated during Holy Week takes place on Pascha Sunday, usually late in the morning to the early afternoon. This is a Vesper service that is called the Agape service, which in English translates to the service of love. This is the only time during the year where the laity are allowed to read the gospel. It is read in as many languages as is available at that parish through the parishioners. This symbolizes the love of Jesus going throughout the world so that his message of salvation and eternal life can be preached to all in every language. With God's grace, I wish you all once again a blessed resurrection. I will conduct a brief Bible study on Wednesday, April the 22nd, this upcoming Wednesday, at 6 o'clock p.m., discussing the gospel that will be read on Sunday, April 26th, 2020, also known as the Sunday of St. Thomas. If you can and read, are able to read this gospel, please do so, and if you have any questions, please either email me, text me, or call me. This week we will be celebrating services on Friday, April 24th for St. George and Zodokos Pigi. Sunday, April 26th, we will be celebrating services for the Sunday of St. Thomas. Divine Liturgy for both days will be televised at 10 o'clock a.m. God bless you and thank you once again for all of your prayers and support. God bless.